Every student at Marshall Middle School has an independent reading goal, whether they're in sixth grade, seventh grade, or eighth grade. And completing their independent reading goal is part of their language arts grade. Now, the question is, what is an independent reading goal? Well, an independent reading, what independent reading is, is it's reading that you do outside of the classroom. All right, you might do some of it at school, but it's not part of what you do during class. All right, and independent reading is the type of reading where you get to choose the book that you're reading. So you will have a goal as to how much of that you have to do. So why do we have an independent reading goal? Well, because reading is super, super, super important. You've got to learn new words. You've got to learn to, you know, expand your imagination. There's so many reasons that reading is independent and that's why we do it. So for those of you who say you don't like reading, my answer is uh, I don't like to pay taxes. That's a bummer. So now that you know that you have to read independently, okay, you have to read independently in middle school, the question is how can you successfully reach your independent reading goal? Well, here's what you do. You finish your book in two weeks or less, all right? Two weeks is your goal. Then you take the AR test on the book and you find a new book. If you do that, you will successfully meet your independent reading goal every single quarter. Okay, so let's talk about books. When you're looking at books, take the time to look for a book that really interests you because let's be honest, your time is valuable, all right? One of the silliest things I ever see, people just take a book off the shelf and they don't even look at it. They don't even think about, hey, would I really, really be interested in that? They don't take time. So you don't want to do that. Make sure that you find a book that truly does look interesting to you. If reading isn't one of your favorite things, and quite frankly, I can't comprehend that because it is one of my favorite things, what I want you to do is choose a book with characters or a setting that you can relate to. As you can see in the library, our library is set up with genres. So if you play sports, hey, you can go to the sports section. If you like stories, you know, that are very realistic, kind of in a setting like what you live in, go to the realistic books. All right. If you're interested in soldiers, you can go to the section that's war and history. Now, another thing is you can always ask your friends what books they enjoyed. All right, that includes asking your seventh grade friends, your eighth grade friends, ask your brothers and sisters. I have eighth graders who work for me in the mornings. They'd love to help you. And of course, you can ask me, all right? Um, I love to talk to people about books and which ones they might like. One of the first questions I always ask people is, hey, if we were gonna watch Netflix, what kind of show would we watch? That really helps me in an interview to understand like what you're interested in. Now, once you have a book, this is super important, guys, all right? Once you have a book that you're interested in, I want you to look at the number of pages in the book. Then I want you to divide that by 10. All right? Then you're going to read that number of pages five days per week. You choose which days are best for you, but at least five days a week outside of school, you're going to read that number of pages. If you do that, you will be a successful reader. When you commit to reading the number of pages in your book divided by 10, all right, five out of seven days of the week, you will be successful. Okay. You will also be a successful reader if you, when you commit to reading a graphic novel in two to three days. So if you get a graphic novel, that's not a 10 day book. Uh, -uh. That's a two or three day book. Now, if you have a panic attack, when you look at the number of pages you'll need to read every night, like if you get a 300 page book and 30 pages a night is giving you a panic attack, guess what? Put the book back on the shelf and look again, all right? So to be a success, you need a book that's not gonna give you a panic attack and one where you can read that number of pages every night, okay? There's over 3,000 books in this library so yeah, you'll find one. And when people tell me I can't find anything to read, well, seriously, when I get up off the floor from laughing so hard, 
I'll just show you again. There's 3,000 books to look at. All right. Once you've chosen your independent reading book, take it everywhere you go. All right. You might have five minutes left in science. You might have eight or nine minutes left in another class. And guess what you can do? You can read. Now, most importantly, you have to take your independent reading book home with you every night. Did I say that? Every night you take it. And then you know what? It comes back to school every day. Now, um, a lot of people like to visually lay out. They like to say they have 200 pages in their book. They divide that by 10. So they got 20 pages a night. So what we do is we'll put a post-it note every 20 pages. That way you know where to start and you know where to end. All right, I promise you, post-it noting the book absolutely works and I'll show you some examples of this. So again, how will you successfully meet your independent reading goal, which is obligatory in middle school. It's not like, oh, I don't like to read. It doesn't matter, sorry, okay? I don't like to try the speed limit. I'm not going to jail and those tickets are really expensive and Mr. Henley would be really ticked off. So again, you know, you got to read. That's it. All right. So finish your book in two weeks or less. How many? Two, two weeks or less. Take an AR test on that book and then find a new book. If you do those things, I guarantee you will successfully meet your goal. All right, so now we're going to go on to speed dating some books. And I'll explain a little bit more once you're all seated. But what I want you to do is here's our rules to speed dating. You need two people at a table. That's two. T-W-O. All right. Once you find a book that you want to read, you're going to open the book and you're going to read. It's going to be either two or three minutes that you're going to read the book. All right. You keep reading until the timer goes off. All right, dating your ex is gross because this is like speed dating. And I make this point because sometimes people will want to speed date a book that they've already read. And no, that's like dating your ex-wife or ex-husband. That's just, no, icky. Okay. Last but not least, the books on the table are for checkout. So if you find a book during speed dating and you're like, oh my gosh, I got to have that book, then yes, go ahead and snag that book. All right. So again, um, when, the lights are, when the lights come back on, you're going to go look around the tables, look for a book that looks interesting to you. All right. Or just remember two people per table. All right. Bye.